good one. I like that. I believe that we believe that everything that he says he is. Amen. And that's, that's a pretty amazing thing. And if you want to know what he says about himself, open your Bible. So I would like to have uh, Romeo come forward and uh, let's give him a hand. Thank you, brother. It's good to have you here preaching with us here this morning. Amen. And uh, I do also want to thank Pastor Allen uh, for his message last week. Absolutely. And we appreciate God using him in a mighty way. Amen. So still thinking about that message. So, Romeo, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, you can lead us on. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate that. Well, definitely want to thank Pastor Jerry and Pastor Jason for this opportunity to come and, and to be able to, to lead this, this Sunday. It's, it's absolutely an honor because I'm doing it for God. No other reason, absolutely no other reason why I would be standing right here in front of all you guys if it wasn't for God. I mean, sometimes I can sit down and I can think of other things that I can possibly be doing. You hear me? But when it comes to the glory of God, obedience has to come into play. Jesus is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the very word of God that came down and was made flesh and dwelt among us. This Jesus that I'm speaking about this morning, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he is worthy. Amen. He is worthy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, this opportunity to come before you, Lord God. And I thank you for your word that we're able to open it up, Lord God, and read what you have for us, the truths that are in your word, that we can adhere to this, Lord. And though our lives may not be perfect, and even though we might struggle, Lord God, that we can trust in your promises that you have laid before us. Give us the courage and the wisdom and the knowledge to continue to seek you wholeheartedly, without wavering. Because we see you, Lord Jesus, and what you did for us. So that we may become to, come to the throne of God holy and blameless. Because of the blood of you, Jesus. We thank you and we glorify you in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I want to start with Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 and 20. And I appreciate Brother Allen when he shared this scripture with you last uh, Sunday as well. And he saith unto them, Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him without hesitation. And we hear the words of Jesus Christ when he says, follow me. What does this look like? Is it simply a small prayer and then I kind of go about my business the way I've always deemed it to be? Or the way that I've always just lived? Or is it much more? My hope and my prayer this morning is to spark a fire within you, a yearning inside of you to do the will of God at any and at all costs. That can be, that's tough. That's tough. We read Matthew chapter 16, 24 and 25. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross 
and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We read that first part. If any man will come after me. It's not a forced deal. You don't have to. You don't have to follow Jesus. It's a, a volunteer type approach that we come before God and we say, Lord, I accept what you did for me on the cross. He does not force absolutely anything on us. It is our free will. And it's a deep and yearning desire within us, in us that says, all I want is to follow you. That's all I want. I see what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. I read what he did for us all on the cross. And that, and that alone just creates something within you that says, this life, whatever I thought it was like, whichever path I thought I was going on, no more. I'm willing to leave all that behind because of what my Savior did for us, what my Savior did for me. I choose. I choose to follow him because he is worthy. He is worthy. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. We no longer put any of our own desire or will in front of the will of God. And to take up our cross, an uh, instrument of torture, is to say that I too am willing to suffer. To do God's work. To go about my father's business. And do what needs to be done, what he placed on my heart. And the same for everyone here. God tells us. He said, I created you with a plan and a purpose. Not just some of us, not just most of us, but every single one of us, he has created with a plan and a purpose. And Jesus Christ He's not asking us to do anything that he has not already done. We read in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Rather, he made himself nothing. He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in an appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So he's not even asking us to do things that are just, that hasn't happened or that he hasn't done. We see him as our example he is our God. And him to willingly leave his place in heaven, imagine, to come down to this earth, walked this earth over 2,000 years ago to be spit on to be drugged, to be whipped, to be hung on a cross so that me and you can stand before the throne of God blameless and holy. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? 
So let us not save our lives here in this world with its temporary pleasures, but lose it for Christ. Luke chapter 14, verse 25 and 26. And we're going to go through a couple of scriptures here in Luke. A large crowd were traveling with Jesus. So you got you to picture this, right? Jesus, he's, he's walking. It's a large crowd behind him. And what does he do? And turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. He saw that large crowd. But instead of saying, ah, look it, got me all, all kinds of followers following me. No. He turns around and says, I don't think you guys understand. I think some of you guys really don't understand what it means to follow me. So let me break it down for you. Just in case you don't, you don't know or you don't understand. Jesus, I can see Jesus at this huge crowd telling them. I want you to fully understand what it means to follow me. Is he telling us that we literally have to hate our father and our mother, our wife and our children, our brothers and our sisters? He's not saying you have to literally hate them. What he's doing, he's comparing our love for the Savior of the world compared to the love for our family. Our love for our family should resemble hate. That's how important it is as followers of Jesus Christ to put him first in our lives. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of what your brother might say, regardless of what your sister might say, regardless of what family might say, regardless of what friends might say, that I'm, a will, I'm willingly, willingly choosing to give it all for Christ. What he wanted to do is drive home with great intensity of what our love for Jesus needs to look like. Jesus demands that our loyalty and love for him be greater than even our affection and attachment in life, including our own families. Verse 28 and 29. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it, Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation, is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. When we make that decision to follow Jesus Christ, we, we have to take that almost proactive approach to it. To sit down and, and take a moment and, and let it all sink in. Am I prepared to pay the cost that comes with following Christ? Am I? We don't want to jump all in and, and get all excited and get other people excited and get family excited. The next thing you know, where'd he go? Where is he? I don't know. I think he's just back to how he was before. And when I read that, when I read that, that's exactly what happened to me. Me and my wife got married in this church. I was 23. We had our son, Nicholas. He was, only, he was about two years old. I got all fired up for God. Ready to, ready to go at it. But what did I fail to do? I failed to sit down and, and first count the cost. Am I willing? Am I really ready? Am I? 
I didn't. I just went with the flow. Hey, what's up? Hi, how you doing? Here at church. Everything's good. Praising God. Amen. I'm not saying there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not what I'm saying because God plants seeds in us. And the man you see standing right here is that man who did this, who fell off, who backslid. I did that. And that's God's love for us. His grace and his mercy on us. That he doesn't leave. He didn't come to me and say, look at you. Got off, we got all fired up. Got your wife all fired up thinking that things were gonna change and, and that things were gonna go according to, to God's will. He didn't, God didn't come up to me and say, you had your chance, sorry. Let me find somebody else. No, he didn't. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he pushed because he wants us all. He wants us all, every single one of us. He wants all of us to give him everything that is within us. Why? Because he gets all the glory. He gets all the glory, and that is what it's about. And there's something for us. To be able to enter the kingdom of God I can't even begin to comprehend what that looks like. To be able to walk into the kingdom of God as a joint heir with him. I think if we all had a, a small glimpse of what heaven would be like, I think it would change the dynamics of everything. But we go by faith. We go by faith. Verse 34 and 35. Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. We are the salt of the earth. But if we no longer do our job as the salt of the earth, we're not even fit to be thrown in the manure pile. At least the manure fertilizes the ground. At least the manure helps to grow crop. But what does salt do? You're gonna mess up my manure. That's serious, right? I can't even throw you on my manure pile. Because at least that nourishes the ground. If we're not willing to become true followers of Christ, what good are we? What good am I? What good are you? We must be able to be the light that shines bright into this dark world. Everybody agree that this world is dark. Sin is looked upon as something that's just great. And it's fun. The world does its best to contaminate our youth. That's why I'm so grateful for Brandy and Jonathan. To willing, willing to grab the reins when it comes to the youth. And to say, let me show you something different. Because trust me, 
The world is like this in their ear, screaming in their ear. You don't need none of that. You don't need none of that. You don't need none of that God business. You don't need none of that Jesus business. Come do this. This is fun. Come on. This is what everybody's doing. It's better. A lie. An absolute lie. Because when you're there and you fall into the temptation of the enemy and you're there and your life is broken and you're sad and you're crying and everything is just a huge disaster, is the enemy there to comfort you? Is he? Just to laugh at you. Look what I did to you. Thought you were on cloud nine. Now look at you. But our loving God. I said, but our loving God. That says, it's okay. It's okay. I'm still here for you. I'm going to still stretch out my hand to you and grab you and pull you out of that dark pit. These ladies here know. I know. My wife knows. Amen. Let me hear it. Let me, let me hear if you know. Do you know? We all know how it is to allow the enemy just to jack us all up. Right? We have to be a little transparent when it comes to that peace. Because when somebody new walks through those doors and we want to just put on that face of perfection, what are they going to do? What are they going to think? I don't belong here. I don't belong here. These guys are all perfect. These guys got it all together. I don't, I must, I guess I don't belong in church. I'm just going to go about and, and, and do what I need to do. But when we come in, when new people come in and we say, hey, <clears throat> let me share you a little bit about my life. Let me talk to you a little bit about what I did. And let me share with you what Jesus Christ did for me. Yeah. I drink alcohol with the best of them. Partied. Did plenty of drugs. But does that define me now? Absolutely not. It's Christ in me that defines who I am. And the same goes with every single one here. Like I was saying, the world, disgusting and perverted, whose aim is to destroy the knowledge of God and wipe out the name of Jesus from our lips. Is that what the world wants to do? That's exactly what it wants to do. It wants to wipe the name of Jesus from our lips. Jesus who? James 4.4. 4. And I love the book of James. If I encourage everyone just to, to go through that and read that. He says, you adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world... You make yourself an enemy of God. These are not my words. This is Holy Scripture. What does, this, what does this friendship with the world involve? It involves embracing the world's attitudes, values, or lack of, practices, ungodly pleasures, and corrupt ways.
he is worthy. The task seems so daunting. The task seems so great. How can we do this? How can we accomplish this? How? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that dwells in every believer. It is He who fills us and gives us everything we need to complete the task Christ has given us. The Holy Spirit of God. The Word of God tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. Every single one of us. So we don't need to try to do it on our own. We can't. I'll tell you right now, you can't. It is only by the power of God that gives us everything that we need to go about our Father's business. Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts 4, 31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Boldly. I was sharing with my sister at, at work about my confidence growing up. It was down here. You could kick it. I remember picturing in, in my mind, standing in a group of individuals. And I would be taller, physically taller than some of these individuals. But then I started noticing in my mind when I would play back that, that moment when I was in that group, Everyone was taller than me. And I would think, like, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was, I was a little taller than, than some of these guys. Didn't matter. The enemy had me to the point where he said, everybody is better than you. Do you think that I would have been able to come up here and to, and to be able to do this? Absolutely not. It is only by the power of God. It is only by the power of God. And I thank God that I don't have to be in that place anymore. <laughs> Praise be to God that I don't have to be in that place anymore. Praise be to God that you don't have to be in that place anymore. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. But I'm weak. What do I do about my weaknesses? I'm human. You're human. I hope we're all human. Yeah, I think so. I think we are. But what do we do in, this, in, in our weaknesses? Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 through 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses 
so that the power of Christ that rests upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, our, our weaknesses, the enemy loves to play with our weaknesses. He loves to grab those weaknesses within us and make us feel like, see, told you you couldn't do it. I told you. But what do we have to learn to do? To be content with our weaknesses. Yes, I am weak. Absolutely, 100%, I am weak. In more ways than I would like to admit But that's when the power of Jesus Christ can come into full effect and make us strong. Jesus, our great reward. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. And this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven through eight, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Philippians 3.20, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And to understand who we are before Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God is all we ever need. We see the sacrifice Jesus did for us so that all who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In Christ we have the forgiveness of sin. In Christ, we have mercy and we have grace. We don't have to live in guilt and we don't have to live in shame. And never forget that nothing we can do can earn us anything. It cannot earn us salvation. It cannot earn us a spot in heaven. It is only by faith in Jesus that these things can be obtained God loves every single one of us with a love that we cannot even begin to comprehend. It is only by the blood of Jesus that we can stand before God holy and blameless. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't judge or condemn. Feed those who are hungry. Give water to those who are thirsty. Show compassion. Some of you may be wondering, how do I seek this will of God? I've mentioned a few there for you. Where do I begin? Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Church, don't judge people. And don't condemn people. That is not your job. Show compassion. When somebody does something against you, don't let it turn to hate. We are all brothers and sisters in here. 
We are all brothers and sisters in here. And if we can't be brothers and sisters in here, are we going to be able to do it out there? No. Matthew 6, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Why do I say this? Why do I share this scripture? Because I don't want anyone to be deceived. I want everyone to get excited about following the will of God in your lives. Matthew 24, verse 24 says, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. If we're not grounded in the word of God, if we're not seeking his will wholeheartedly, we think things are crazy right now in this world, things are going to get worse. And if we're not prepared, some new person will rise up and shine like a bright, bright star. And everybody will be like, well, I'm going to go follow this guy. Things are going to get hard. And we must be prepared. We must be prepared. If I can have Diana and, and uh, I believe Holly's going to be coming up with her. We're going to be playing a, a song for us. So I ask, is this Jesus that I'm speaking of right now? Is he worthy of everything we have Everything we are. Is he? Is he? Yes. Ladies, go ahead. your Savior. There's some of you here this morning that need to recommit to following the will of God. There's some of you here this morning who are hurting and who are suffering and who want change in their lives. And they know, you know, that you need Jesus in the center of everything that you do. I want to invite you up. Don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. Even if it's just a recommitment to say, I will follow you all the days of my life. Come up. I trust in you for every heart. Can I have some of the prayer team come up, please?
get behind some of these ladies. Get behind some of these men. Don't hesitate.